Hi guys, as you know, Russia-Ukraine tensions are at their all-time high. On one hand, Russia has deployed more than one lakh soldiers and thousands of tanks. On the other hand, Ukraine has started preparing itself for a full-scale invasion. In this video, we are going to understand the entire conflict in detail. We will discuss how this conflict started and what would be its conclusion. Let's start the video with the first topic that is the problem of Black Sea Fleet. After the dissolution of Soviet Union in 1991, Russia had inherited almost complete ex-Soviet Black Sea Fleet. However, Russia lost the entire access to the Black Sea and Sevastopol, the home port of the Black Sea Fleet. Along with Russia also lost a major shipbuilding capability as some of the finest shipbuilders of the Soviet Union were located in the Ukraine SSR. The Russian Navy is still plagued by the loss as the Russian Navy is unable to induct any new aircraft carrier after the fall of the Soviet Union. The Black Sea Fleet is strategically very important for Russia as it helps to establish its influence over the Mediterranean region through the Turkish Strait. After the fall of Soviet Union, both Russia and Ukraine had very friendly relations due to their deep cultural ties. As a result, Russia was granted permission to use Sevastopol and other naval infrastructure in Crimea up to 2017. Now the atmosphere will change. Changing political atmosphere in Ukraine. Now let us understand Ukraine's domestic politics in order to understand the beginning of Russia-Ukraine tensions. Let us analyze the situation from 2010 onwards. By this time there were two ethnic groups in Ukraine. One group identified themselves with the Ukrainian identity whereas the other group felt more connected with the Russian culture. The Donbas region comprising of Donetsk and Luhansk along with Crimea had a pro-Russian majority, whereas the western part of the country had a pro-Ukrainian European people. Viktor Yanukovych won the presidential election in 2010. He was considered to be a pro-Russian leader. After becoming president, he leased out naval facilities in Crimea to Russia for another 25 years. That is, if we calculate up to 2042 in return for very cheap natural gas. But the Ukraine people saw that the selling their sovereignty just for cheap gas is really pity. Yanukovych was also allegedly involved in large-scale corruption and tried to introduce autocratic reforms inspired by Russia. Due to all these reasons, his approval rating and popularity fell rapidly. Before the 2014 election, he went in a damage control mode. In 2013, his government heavily publicized the European Union Association Agreement and the people liked it. But in 2014, the government refused to sign the deal. This was the last nail in the coffin. The EU Association Agreement triggered widespread protest across the Ukraine. This protest soon turned into civil disobedience and then into riots. Brutal clashes took place between the police and the civilians, which took the lives of hundreds of civilians. Soon the movement became a revolution. As a result, Yanukovych and other officials of the government had to flee the country. A new pro-European government was formed and Petro Poroshenko became the new president. Now let's discuss the annexation of Crimea or the start of the conflict. When all these political turmoils were going on to Ukraine, Russia opportunistically invaded and annexed Crimea. As discussed earlier, Crimea was extremely important and strategically and geopolitically for Russia. Russia also conducted a referendum in Crimea in which an overwhelming majority were supporters of Russia. However, NATO and the EU and United Nations and Ukraine never accepted these results. Since then, America and its allies became highly interested in Ukraine as America got another excuse for imposing sanctions on Russia. The Donbas War and Russia-Ukraine tensions As Russia annexed Crimea from Ukraine and a pro-European government was formed in Kyiv, fresh protests started in Donbas region where a pro-Russian people were in majority. Soon these protests turned into armed rebellion. Allegedly, Russia supplied small arms and heavy equipment such as surface air missiles to these rebels with which they shot down Malaysian M flight MH17. The western countries also have allegations that Russian forces are fighting in Donbas disguised as rebels. For the past 8 years, Russia-Ukraine conflict has been going on. There are several attempts of negotiating a ceasefire but none achieved long-lasting peace in the region. And now, as you have seen the situation, Russia has already declared independent states Donetsk and Luhansk. 
and also ordered a peacekeeping strategy of military operation in both the states as a result of which now ukrainian government is in danger because russia has rushed in his military equipments into the both the state now if we see what does putin want russia has spoken a moment of truth in recasting its relationship with nato and has highlighted three demands first it wants a legal binding pledge that nato will not expand further mr putin has complained russia has nowhere further to retreat in 1994 russia signed an agreement to respect independent ukraine's independent and sovereignty but last year president putin wrote a long piece describing russians and ukrainians as one nation and now he has claimed modern ukraine was entirely created by communist russia he sees the collapse of soviet union in december 1991 at the disintegration of historical russia and he wants to form ussr again as a result of which all the russian members will be back and again connected with russia so this was today's video about the recent conflict going around ukraine and russia however we don't know what situation will occur or what situation will become next but we can hope for the best and let us keep our finger crossed for not happening a war so this much for today's video i hope you like the video do like share and subscribe the channel until then jai hind vande mataram